Well, the AIDLR is a very positive force in uh, promoting respect of human dignity throughout the world. I should say that the AIDLR is not affiliated to any religion, to any political party, but it strongly believes that freedom of thought, freedom of religion, or belief, freedom of expression are key if you want to live in a world of peace, in a world of harmony. And that is why the meeting, the conference, the AIDLR convened in Lisbon is timely. It is timely because our world is in turmoil. Never in our time we have seen so many conflict. We have seen so many attacks against freedom of belief, freedom of religion, freedom of expression. And we have seen an escalation of hate of speech. And this in all parts of the world. Mm -hmm. We have seen what I call the new international. We have had in the past the international socialists, we have the international liberal, and today we have the international of far right wing groups. And uh, we need therefore uh, to uh, recommit to those values, which are the values the AIDLR has been promoting since its establishment. Well, let me start by simply saying, uh, like did uh, Congressman uh, McGovern at a recent uh, meeting, in fact, that's the annual meeting of the International Religious Freedom Summit in Washington. Unless religious freedom belongs to everyone, it doesn't belong to anyone. Which means, in other words, what uh, Sheikh Abdullah bin Bayah was saying around the same time. It is time for all religion uh, to get together, to give hand. And when I say it, all religion, I include even those traditional religions in Africa. And I also include, to my view, and that is key, even non-believers have to get together because what we are talking is about human fraternity at the end of the day. You may certainly have heard about the important document which was signed by His Holiness Pope Francis and uh, the, the Grand Imam of Al-Azhar, Dr. Ahmed Tayeb, in Abu Dhabi. This was on the 4th of February 2019. This document is open to everyone. It's not only for the Abrahamic religions, Islam, Christianism, Judaism. It is even for the non-believers because we are all brothers and sisters in humanity. And uh, I always remind people how important is freedom of religion, but freedom of religion cannot sustain unless freedom of expression is also respected. These two freedoms are interconnected. They are complementary. And uh, during the meeting of AIDLR in Lisbon, I uh, took note of one important uh, uh, aspect which was uh, mentioned regarding freedom of expression. That means even love, you have to express it. And that freedom of expression is key. It is something which is inherent to our nature as a human being. And uh, that is why we need today more than ever uh, to get engaged along with every actor be the political leaders, religious leaders, civil society actors, tech companies, 
uh, to really constitute a vanguard uh, to protect freedom of religion and freedom of expression. And uh, I do say that uh, when we speak about freedom of religion, contrary to some people are arguing that uh, Islam uh, doesn't recognize the freedom of religion, I said no. Even in Islam, you have the right uh, to leave because it is a choice. There is no compulsory in, uh, in Islam. And therefore, when you choose to become an Islam, that is your personal choice. And because you have made that choice, my God, you are free to, to, to live, to abandon it. And that's why I, I still have a, a discussion when it comes to the issue of apostasy. Because to me, the, the right to choice uh, is something extremely important before you uh, enter the religion of Islam. Because you need to be truly committed. But if you have, if the Almighty God has given you that uh, possibility to choose, that means you have also the possibility uh, to uh, <laughs> to quit. Uh, so 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 that's why we need to uh, really uh, go back to the roots. And if we go back to the roots, for instance, of uh, Islam, we will see that the first uh, constitution, which was proclaimed by the Prophet of Islam, Muhammad, peace be upon him and it is known as the Charter of Medina. In that constitution, you have a key provision which guarantee the rights of all minorities, religious, national, racial, ethnic, name them all. And this was no, no surprise because once again, for Islam, we are all equal. So when you go back 1948, to the Universal Declaration, all people are born free in rights and dignity. That is the same message which you found in that uh, Charter of Medina. Well, uh, as you may know, uh, these are categories which sometimes don't go in the same direction. And this is one of the reasons uh, the AIDLR uh, launched an important initiative, which I uh, supported at that time in my capacity as the United Nations and the Secretary General in charge of the prevention of genocide. Uh, that uh, initiative was uh, coined by uh, the former Secretary General of AIDLR, Dr. Liviu. Uh, who uh, really made a great uh, work during his tenure of 10 years. And uh, he believed, and I strongly uh, concurred with him, that time had come to get uh, the politician, to get the religious leaders, to get the scholars, the social media, the tech companies, and also the diplomats to get together. That was what we call the platform of the five, the dialogue, dialogue of five. Why? Because each of those actors has a potential uh, to mobilize for the protection of freedom of religion, the protection of freedom of expression, but globally speaking, to prevent uh, atrocity crimes to occur. Because the reason why I was uh, with uh, uh, leave you in that project was that I came to the conclusion in 2013 that religious leaders have a key role to play in preventing incitement to violence that could lead to atrocity crimes, by which I mean genocide, crimes against humanity, war crime, ethnic cleansing. So, hopefully, this uh, dialogue, this platform has been put in place and it is my sincere hope that the national chapters of the AIDLR will make good use of it because this was at the international level but we have to go back to the regional, the national and 
local level. level. Today, we are facing many challenges. And one of the key challenges we are facing when we discuss about freedom of religion and freedom of expression is how to strike the balance. And my point has been always that uh, to address uh, hate speech, because here, when we, the, the, the challenge is, in fact, this uh, rise of hate speech would some tend to consider as uh, affecting uh, freedom of religion and other things that at the same time you cannot, uh, uh, let's say, uh, consider uh, freedom of expression as something which gives you the right to say whatever you want. And we have simply to remember that uh, freedom of expression is central. You cannot have freedom of religion if freedom of expression is not respected. And uh, that is why I uh, have been uh, very much uh, concerned uh, to see some states uh, considering uh, to uh, legislate, uh, to pass draconian laws uh, to address uh, hate speech. Hate speech is a gray area, but when it comes to uh, hate speech, when it comes to incitement to hatred, incitement to violence, this is something which is prohibited by international human rights law. You go back to the uh, 1965 uh, Convention on Fighting Discrimination, you will find that incitement is prohibited. You go to the 1948 Genocide Convention, you will see also that incitement is prohibited. And even the Outcome Summit document, which was adopted by the world leaders in 2005, September 2005, they adopted that important document. Why? Because the international community failed uh, the people in Srebrenica, failed the Tutsis in Rwanda. And as a lesson, they decided that no longer we will remain uh, passive when people are facing the risk of genocide crimes against humanity were crimes. And we have the obligation to intervene to protect those people, but we have also the obligation to prevent incitement. So here I underline prevention of incitement. And that is also the reason why in 2013 I started a process uh, which led uh, finally uh, to the uh, adoption by uh, religious leaders around the world of an important uh, plan of action known as the FAIS Plan of Action for religious leaders in preventing incitement to violence that could lead to atrocity crimes. And uh, this was supported by uh, uh, the Muslim, by the Vatican, you know, by everyone, the Hindu, the Buddhist, everyone supported that call. So, which means that uh, we need to simply recommit. Re by recommitting also, we have to realize that uh, hate speech, you cannot fight it by uh, simply passing laws. It's, uh, we need, in fact, more speech, but positive speech, but positive speech. And for that, how to get it, you need coalitions. You need governments, civil society, tech companies, everyone, religious leaders, to get together and to develop positive narrative. And uh, at the end of the day, this can bear fruits. But if you decide uh, to silence people, you will not achieve 
the good result because and that is something I did even when I uh, initiated that project I included even the atheist association because to me uh, the atheists you have to accept them you have to accept everyone it is about humanity we are one world we are one humanity and never say that my God is more beautiful than your God. My book is more beautiful than your, than your book. Who knows? And that's where I always say, it. I am a Muslim, and I always say that only God knows who is a true Muslim. Because what means Muslim? Muslim is submission to your creator. So I can say at the end of the day, that all, every people who believe in the God is a Muslim, that because you are submitted to your creator. And in the Quran, it is said that the better among you is the closer to God. But who knows who is closer to him? You can go every day to the mosque. You can go every day to the church. I may be the one not going to the church, not going to the mosque, but ultimately, only he knows who is closer to him because the religion for me is there start with the heart you know and that is why it is important today that we continue to promote uh, this uh, speech so that we can touch on the heart and the minds of the people and particularly the young people These two uh, freedom, I always say, are twins. They are twins. They go hand in hand. If you decide uh, to uh, silence someone to worship, that you are affecting his or her right to uh, exercise freely. You are attacking his, her conscience. And that is simply unacceptable. That is about his or her human dignity. And uh, freedom of religion is inherent to our human nature. So does freedom of expression. To me, these are uh, the most beautiful freedoms. And uh, the one, when we speak about freedom of expression, from the beginning when you are a baby, you start crying, start smiling, because the expression can be something vocal, can be something internal. And that's why I think uh, like uh, one of the presenters during the Lisbon conference of the AIDLR on these two freedoms was saying, it is important that we learn to listen. And this is something in my country, one of uh, our uh, spiritual leaders, religious leaders, he was uh, saying, when people are going to learn how to speak. Go and learn how to listen. Because listening is more important than speaking. And we need, therefore, uh, to have that uh, capacity, we have to develop that capacity to listen to each other. I was discussing one day with uh, the late Cardinal Turan at the Vatican. May his soul rest in peace. And uh, at the end of our discussion, we reached the conclusion that the most serious threat uh, to our planet is not what uh, Huntington theorized and called the clashes of civilization. But we concluded that the most serious threat is the clashes of ignorances because we need to know better each other. I have to look you in your eyes and I have to see myself through your eyes. And I am you, you are me. 
So the, the, the day we realize to know each other, respecting our differences, we will simply live in a better world that will be a peaceful world because there will be peace in ourselves already. Well, uh, I should say that I was extremely impressed by the quality of uh, the uh, participant in this conference. I have been in hundreds and hundreds of conferences during my life, but the way uh, the uh, conference was structured and uh, the variety of the team with also some logic from the first panel to the last one. It was, was something I didn't expect. I was thinking that it, uh, this will be another conference where people will simply talk, talking, talking, talking. But this conference was important because it ended with a better understanding of uh, these two notions, these two rights freedom of religion, freedom of expression, one. But also it was important because it uh, showed clearly that these two rights are complementary and that we cannot attack one right thinking that the other right will survive. So therefore we concluded that these rights have to be together. But what is also important to, to, to note is that uh, there is a dynamic which ref came out of this discussion. And I was very pleased to see that uh, uh, many uh, head of national chapters of EALIERA were present at this meeting. But we have also the cream of the experts on religious freedom and freedom of expression, and uh, including even the special rapporteur on uh, freedom of religion or belief. So uh, people expert on uh, uh, the, counts, the, 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 the jurisprudence of uh, Strasbourg, etc. If I have only one regret, is uh, that uh, in the next conference of uh, AIDLR to have more uh, participants coming from Asia, from Africa. I think it's very important because the AIDLR have to go beyond the boundaries of uh, Europe. It is true that there are problems in Europe. It is true that we are seeing tension between uh, East and West, uh, North and South. But I think the more we get together, the more we will also understand. And in this regard, I cannot but really uh, congratulate the uh, Secretary General of the ALDLR for bringing together this group of uh, near 100 participants who truly committed uh, to continue promoting the respect of freedom of religion and freedom of expression.